Hi, my name is Nicole and this is my YouTube channel. This is a podcast about slow making, knitting and sewing mostly, and today's episode is Knit Chat, so all the knits today. Um, I'm coming to you from the traditional lands of the Yagara and Turrbal people, Mianjin, Australia. Um, and start off usually with what I'm wearing and what's on the chair, so I'll um, do that now, except that what I'm wearing is a bit problematic because I don't want to share about the, I don't want to advertise for the designer. Um, there was just a few instances a few years ago um, on social media with her interactions um, that were um, a bit problematic regarding racism, etc. And I decided that I wouldn't support her anymore, even though I, I have already bought quite a few of her patterns. So, um, yes, I, I try to do what I can to um, support um, people that share the same ideals as me. Um, and so I don't really want to make any of those patterns that I bought, um, which is a bit of a shame. And they are great designs. So, um, you know, I try not to get sucked into a good design um, without having respect for the designer um, and their values that align with my own. So, um, and that goes for a lot of things, not just um, racism, but also climate, etc. Um, so anyway, enough of that. Um, I don't want to talk about that too much. I'm not going to tell you um, what the design is, but if you know it, you know it. Um, I am just like still really in love with this one. Pink, love pink, one of my favorite colors. And this is um, a tweed, Donegal tweed from Circus Tonic Handmade. And um, the top doesn't have a front or back, like this is the same height, and I actually don't mind that. I thought that I would, but I don't. Um, I don't mind it coming up close. I really don't mind the boat neckline as well. I think that helps with the closeness of the front, um, just to have a little bit of space there. And I'm really, really proud of my color work in this one. Um, this is not actually the same color as that. It's a um, really, uh, delicately speckled white um, but they match together really well it's only when you look closely that you can see um, how nice it is actually I might see if I can show you that so you can see like little bits of hot pink through the white part so I love the gentle gentle contrast there and obviously the really stark contrast with the black and this is my favorite outfit to wear with it so pink faces dress that I made um, with this tea. Okay, so what's on the chair today? Um, a little bit of a um, theme for today's podcast, not a theme, but some other things I'll talk about later is sort of things that have just hung around in my stash or things that I've made that I don't wear. So sadly, this is one of them, this shawl. Um, I have quite a lot of shawls, so I don't, I tend to I tend to reach for my favorites and um, this this doesn't get reached for. So this is just um, a beautiful triangular shawl um, that I did as a test knit for the Sweater Collective. Her name is Jessica Gore. I don't know if she designs that much anymore, um, but beautiful Australian designer and I love her things. And this is a very enjoyable knit. Like I love the stitch patterns and I decided to do a fade over mine, which I think actually looks a bit more successful on the on the wrong side. Yes. <laughs> so um, I had this um, beautiful sparkly yarn. I don't know if you can see those details. Um, and I started off making a so faded jumper by Drea Renee Knits. And um, I faded it. I just wanted the top to be this sparkly yarn and then to fade it into like two skeins of um, one other color that matched really, really well. It was gonna be a beautiful subtle thing and it just looked like it's sparkly and then suddenly it was not sparkly anymore. Um, and I can't remember whether I had two skeins or I, only had one skein and I thought it was going to work with one skein, but I definitely ran out of that plain color. And then when I ordered more, it was so much the different dye lot that it looked like I was striping 
um, later on. So I ended up frogging that whole thing. Yeah, so maybe this episode is a little bit of, um, you know, the not roaring successes of, of um, knitting. Um, and it's good to talk about that sort of thing as well instead of always loving on everything. So I repurposed that yarn into this shawl. Um, I do really love the fade to this kind of greenish pink yarn and then to a solid olive there. Um, it's just, I think the reason why I don't wear it that much is because it's just triangular and um, my favourite shawls are the ones that like wrap around really well, um, that have like a little bit of shaping to to bring them into a really great wearing position um, when I wrap them around. So um, that's interesting to note. I do um, think it's really beautiful though. I don't think I'm gonna frog it. Um, I'll probably just hang it around as art and stuff in my home, which is totally another um, valid purpose for shawls if you don't wear them, in my opinion. So that's what's on the chair today. Uh, sorry, I forgot to say what it was called. It was called Love Lace, I believe, and I'll correct myself down below if that's not right. Love Lace by The Sweater Collective. Okay, so now we're on to um, the first segment proper and that's um, finished objects. So, um, yeah, it's been really fun the last couple of episodes to do them with my sister. So it's been a while and I'm feeling a little strange to be doing it by myself now. Um, but uh, you'll remember from my last episode that I was very close to finishing the Sky Glow Shawl and I finished it shortly after that. So um, it's all done now, but I haven't blocked it yet. Um, yeah, I know the weather's nice and I just should block it. Um, I hopefully get to that this weekend. I've been putting them off. So, um, yeah, I love how in this, this Sky Glow, the hot pink, really glows out of the gray fabric. Um, I think it just looks really cool. This is a design by Anise Sang. Um, and I love the full on pink pops at the bottom. The eyelet texture, it's just a really beautiful shawl. And what I was saying before about how um, the shape really influences whether I reach for it, I think this one's going to be a favorite because you can see the shape is not totally like like a proper um, isosceles triangle that it shapes in, especially at the top here. You can see how it curves around a little bit. And I love that. And I think that's going to really contribute to a very wearable shawl. So I'll definitely be whipping this one out for uh, autumn and winter next year. Ah, so pretty, love it. So um, this is a really fun knit. Um, this is really beautiful knit. I'm really happy with it. The one thing I will say is that I ran out of gray just for the last cast off bit. I couldn't use the same gray, so I just used some other thing. Um, and it doesn't quite fit in with the drape and sort of thickness of the other gray, which is disappointing, but I don't think you can really notice it. Um, from a distance. Um, so that's just something to note, maybe just watch your yardage. I don't know if I even really checked my yardage for that, but don't be like me, you should check your yardage. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to just grab stuff and knit it and um, I don't really check the yardage. I do for sweaters, okay? A little bit less so for shawls, especially if I think I can, you know, get away with it and easily like maybe do a different color or um, order more yarn. So <laughs> there's that. Um, really happy with my final product. The other thing I was working on was the baby blanket for my colleague. She still hasn't had the babies yet. They're like maybe a couple of weeks away. Um, and we gifted them to her three weeks ago. So I knit one and my colleague knit one and they turned out beautifully. So I don't have them because we already gifted them. Um, but I'll pop some pictures in. I really like um, the color combo that I chose, me knitting the silver and my colleague knitting the green. I think they go really well together and they're gender neutral. Although people were like, ooh, that green one kind of gives away the sex of the baby. I'm like, well, we don't know the sex of the baby. Um, green can be for anyone. And by the way, pink and blue can be for anyone as well. I just don't 
prescribe or subscribe to that idea of, you know, peak for girls, boo for boys. I think that's just a load of rubbish. So, um, don't even get me started, obviously. Um, yeah, they turned out beautifully. She was really, really touched by the gift and, um, yeah, really, really happy with that. Would make that pattern again. I think it's really beautiful. Okay. And my last finished object to show today is my coloring book tea by Amy Schur. So I did view A and view B mixed together. So view A has the little contrast stripes on the edges of the um, hems, cuff hems and um, collar. But I also wanted the bigger stripes as well. So stripes everywhere. I realize I don't have any knitted striped tops. Um, well, or sweaters. I have one striped sweater that I wear um, that's ready to wear, um, so I didn't knit it. And it's just kind of like an everyday sort of thing. I chuck over when I'm walking the dogs and I actually wear it out at all. Um, so it's really cool to have something striped and I love stripes and so maybe I'll do more of that. This is knit in the yarn that it, it's supposed to be knit in, one of the choices given on the pattern, and that is the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. And I think I really like it, the Pure Silk. It, um, the texture is definitely like different. I haven't blocked this one either yet. So the texture is definitely different from like Superwash or something. You can see like, um, it's just a little bit more open. Um, but maybe that'll change with, uh, blocking. I feel like it was a little harder to be really even with the stitches, but, um, still turned out fine. Um, I hope I can wear this a little bit longer in this, in the year because it's silk. Whereas I really can't be wearing this pretty much even now. Um, it's like 24 degrees Celsius today. And that's cool. That's a bit cool for Brisbane at the moment. So uh, I'm hoping that um, something in silk will help me wear knits longer. Um, I have to share that I, very, I had never done a tubular cast off. I have done tubular cast ons and I love the way that they look, how it just like looks like the ribs just come out of nowhere. So I was pumped to do tubular cast off on all my edges. Also the stretch is really good with a tubular cast off. So I diligently watched a video and wrote down instructions and follow, followed them, got into the rhythm, you know, you pearl through the front, you do this, you do that. It took ages, it took ages, especially around the bottom, like hours and hours just to cast off the bottom of this. Um, and then obviously I did the sleeves, cast them off, and then I was doing the collar and because I'd done the tubular cast off stitches so many times, I realized, oh my God, the pearls are supposed to line up with the pearls and the knits are supposed to line up with the knits. <laughs> that sounds like so obvious and like such a stupid mistake, but because of the pattern of the rib in this pattern, it starts on the pearl, not on the knit. So I was doing the tubular cast off instructions just like as they were, which was that they assumed that the knit was the first stitch. So it's not right. The tubular cast off is not at all right, but um, whatever. I think it still looks great, <laughs> but I know that for next time. And that's all also what knitting's about, a bit of learning there as well. So I'm um, really happy with this top and um, I haven't blocked it. I said I haven't taken pictures, but you can watch out on my Instagram for when I do that. I actually left a little tail here um, just to help me easily find the back every time. And I think that's a great idea that I will be implementing um, a lot. So, uh, because sometimes I'll just, when I want to put a knit on, I'll just kind of like hold it up like this and be like, where's the, where's the front, where's the back? So it's good to just easily be able to see straight away. Cause you know, even with short row shaping, sometimes you can't really tell um, straight away where the front and back is. So that's the coloring book tea by Amy Sher, um, my other finished object. Okay, so on to whips, um, works in progress. I'll start with the one 
that everybody has been doing. Um, well, not everybody, but a lot of people. And you knew I was doing it too because I did the MCAL special episode with my colors. Um, and I didn't choose any of those color combinations, but I basically chose the purple pot plant one, um, but changed the neutral color. So the neutral color for that, that I showed in my last video for Knit Chat was um, like cream with like tiny little speckles of green sprinkled through, um, which I love, but I felt like because the main color was so variegated green and purple, that maybe I should make that neutral um, more solid. So I did, I went with um, this for my CC, it's Crema by Louis and Lola, Crema the colorway I mean, um, that purple and green um, MC color, um, Echivaria by Twill and Print, and my accent color Ultra, which is a life in the long grass color. So yeah, that just reminding you there, Ultra and um, Echivaria and Crema. So um, this MCAL, <laughs> I am in the middle of my chevron row, so I'm sorry about that, but um, I could have like tried to finish a row, but I was knitting on the bus late last night back from a concert, so um, I'm in the middle there. This section one here, um, clue one was a slog, like a real slog, all that casting on and casting off, bloody hell. So um, I, I am really happy with how it looks and I do think that this braided feature is very cool, but it really like, it was a struggle for my knitting mojo, I tell you what. But once I start something, I'm pretty well committed. So I generally see things through and if something, if I'm not enjoying something, I just try to do it faster so I can get to the next bit. So did that and then it goes on to clue two here. Oh, sorry if this is like spoilers for people, but um, it is kind of, you know, um, over the MCAL. I haven't finished, so I'm sure all of you have seen the pictures online and stuff now. That's the section two. I love how my accent color plays in with the MC color there. And then also the, um, the way that that CC color looks in the cables. Crema cables. I definitely will do those eye cord embellishments through the cables, but I also hated section three, clue three. So that was knitting these long purple strips by themselves. And then they, I thought they just looked so stupid. Um, I had the feeling, like I knew they were gonna get picked up later, but I just hated it. Um, I love how it looks, but not enjoyable to knit one long, silly, skinny strip. Um, so I have to say overall, I haven't been enjoying this knit like I usually do, um, which is a shame. Um, I think it's just like a little bit too modular, like a little bit too much knitting one tiny thing and then adding on to that. Yeah, so you kind of like lost, well, I lost the sense of rhythm that I like as part of knitting. So, you know, it's very meditative knitting. We've heard all the research and heard all the, all the people talking about it, but like knit, purl, knit, purl, or even just like a lace pattern that's longer and more complicated. It becomes so rhythmic and intuitive, but there was none of that in this, well, not none of it, but not a lot of that in this knit. And that's why I haven't really enjoyed it. I think I will enjoy and love the final the final product, but gee, I tell you what, it hasn't been, it hasn't been an enjoyable knit. I don't know how you guys all feel. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh there, but yeah. I've seen a couple of people that have just given up and ripped them out because it's just like, you're supposed to enjoy doing knitting. And it's something to think about as a designer. I think if it hasn't got a flow and a rhythm, no matter how awesome the end product is, you know, Part of why we do this is the process. It's not all product oriented, even though I am generally quite product oriented. So I'm loving my color combo and hopefully in the next video, I'll give you an update with the finished 
one of these. So I'm working on that pretty hard because I just want it to be done. Just want it to be done. Um, my mum and sister are doing it too and they're going well. Um, we all struggled with that first clue with the mojo. But yeah, I'll hopefully be able to show you theirs in like some pictures next time as well. My other whip was something I started, I cast on just before um, the MCAL. And just when October hit, I was like, it's October. I'm going to knit socks for the first time. I'll show you what pattern I chose. I think I've shown the wool before and it's skein here as a um, wool purchase. So that's the pattern from the line book, 52 Weeks of Socks. It's called Garia um, by Erica Lopez. So um, my yarn, surprise, surprise, is kind of variegated. So felt like this sort of simple design, but with something a little bit interesting would be good. And I started it, first line of the pattern was like, use Judy's magic cast on. And I was like, great, don't know what that is. So straight away had to be like looking on YouTube. But how cute is my little toes of the sock? <laughs> so I'm really, really pleased with that. I hope I haven't forgotten where I'm up to, but I probably have. I probably didn't write it on the pattern where I was up to. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to getting back into making this um, because first ever real socks. And that's just what my color looks like. It's a Jane Austen colorway, which I love. So um, yeah, really proud of myself for new skills and trying something different. So socks, I'm going to love them. Let me see now whether I even wrote on the pattern where I was up to. Um, no, definitely did not. So will I have to start that again just to know what I'm up to? My counter says three, so whatever that means. <laughs> Wish me luck finding that out. Okay, so I haven't got any um, new yarn purchases um, to show you. I don't buy um, stuff all the time. So um, I haven't, I mean, I was, I had a bit of extra money from doing a couple of extra gigs. I thought I wanted to buy something, but um, nothing was really jumping out at me and my stash is feeling really good at the moment, <laughs> really healthy. So I felt like um, I didn't really need to add to it, but that may all change. And also I'm getting an advent calendar for um, Christmas. So I'm pumped for that. I will just bring some stash forward to show you. Um, so stash flash today. Um, and it's all about, this episode is all about like, um, you know, maybe thinking about things that we made a while ago and things that we bought a while ago, like made this a while ago and don't wear it. Why are things not getting love? So now I'm going to show you a combo that was a gift, was it? My sister got me, I think. It was a while ago, so it might have, it might have been a gift. Um, this is the Ching Fiber combination for Dre Renee Knits um, uh, pink velvet, pink velvet um, sweater, which I loved when it came out. And I still do love it, so I should make it already. Um, I love that it's like two fibers that I haven't really worked with. So the um, Yak and the Suri. So I'm really excited to do that. That's This is her original combination um, that she used for the sample. So like, I'll put a picture up. Um, I love the sheen on Yak. I think it's gorgeous. These colors are peachy. So it's the same colorway that looks just like so different on different bases. And I love that concept. So um, I hope I'll get to make this Maybe this should be on my list of things to make um, for next year's winter. Um, I'm also thinking like these, this year, I've just kind of knit whatever I want when I want, just by impulse. Um, so I think, I'm thinking of maybe like in the sewing world, there's, they do this thing called make nine. Um, actually, I wonder if that's for 
knitting too. Uh, but I see it mostly sewists on Instagram do a make nine at the end of the year um, for what they want to make next year and they try to tick them off through the year. I didn't do one this year. I've done it in the past without that much success. So I wonder if I'll be successful with this. We'll see. But um, I'm thinking of maybe planning just like two or three key makes um, for my wardrobe. So things that I think that are really going to mix in well. Um, lately, I've been feeling like like my wardrobe isn't that cohesive with the style that I I feel my style is changing. So I don't feel like everything goes together or pairs the way that I used to think that it paired. So I think it's time to maybe make a plan for next year with both my sewing and my knitting so that I really end up with a great wardrobe that I feel like I can pull lots of different pieces from. So maybe this pink velvet will get into that mix. We'll see. Um, it certainly would slot well into my wardrobe of pinks. Um, so yeah, there's that um, from my stash. And the other one I wanted to show you, um, I have four skeins of, but I'm just going to grab the three of them because it's easier for my hands to hold, um, is another Drea Renee, Renee Knits pattern. So Andrea Murray, um, I think she's just a beautiful designer. Her designs are just really they they sort of sway between really classic and um sort of forward as well so it's really nice um i've picked out a few kits from my stash for stuff to make that and a lot of a lot of the stuff is hers so this is for the weekender light so in fingering because i prefer to knit fingering weight um for my climate and also actually I just enjoy fingering weight yarns, um, personal preference things. So this is Louis and Lola from Tasmania. Um, it's Lola sock, so it's got some nylon in it. So I'm hoping that works well for the weekender light. And the colorway is called Early Morning. So I love the gray. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, like a duck or a bird, a seabird. Maybe that's just because I'm wearing, um, I'm reading where the crawdads sing at the moment, um, the books. So there's a lot of talk of birds and seabirds and their colors. So I think this is just really beautiful. Like, look at all these speckles there. It just, it's like, it's like some sort of bird, isn't it? Um, so that's the, um, that's another one from my stash that I'm hoping to make one day. Um, that's the other reason why I think I haven't bought anything lately. It's because I have all this great yarn in my stash and all these great plans and I just don't really knit that much. I don't finish that many projects because I'm quite slow. So like this year, what I finished like this tee and a sweater and a shawl and then this new shawl and a baby blanket and a bunch of gifts. So for me, that's only really like two garments and two shawls. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I have to be really mindful about what I'm going to choose to knit next year. And also I do want to try to find a bit more knitting time so I can knit way more than I do. So the last thing for um, this episode is um, again, talking about things that were made and weren't made, weren't worn. Um, so I'm going to show you one of my finished objects that I don't wear that really, it's a little bit painful to talk about. Like, why don't I wear this? Because it looks amazing. This is the Drea Renee Knits. Yeah, it's become a bit of a Drea Renee Knits episode too. Drea Renee Knits honeycomb, no, um, wool and honey, wool and honey uh, sweater. And the pattern is just incredible. I love this honeycomb thing. Um, so reasons why I don't wear it. It is a very high neck, like right up there. And um, I don't love that. Although I tried it on just before this video to sort of try to pinpoint um, why I don't wear it. And that didn't bother me as much as it has in the past. So that's good. I might bring it out a little bit more. I'm going to give this one more year. Like if I don't wear this at all next cold season, I didn't this past one, then I'm going to have to think about probing it. Maybe I'll give it two more years. 
So um, I love the colorway. It's an Olan yarn um, in the colorway artichoke. It's just that it's a little bit tight. Like there's not as much ease as I would like. It's not tight, like, um, you know, constricting, but it's just, I would like a little bit more ease through the arm, maybe through the bust and a little bit more length. But I am in the process of sewing some high-waisted trousers. I'm not, I haven't started, but I want to. Um, so maybe if I had more things to pair it with, then I'd be more likely to wear it. The other reason why I don't reach for it is that it just catches on everything. So I didn't use a superwash yarn, um, a, a non-superwash yarn. I used a superwash yarn. Um, and it just, the, the honeycomb pattern doesn't like blend into the fabric. Like, um, I think I need to use a non-superwash that'll just felt a little bit and, and, and go into um, the fabric more so it doesn't get caught as much. Um, so yeah, a bit sad about that one, why I don't wear it, but it's good to, well, I, I want to really get into the practice of evaluating my closet, making sure that I get rid of things, pass on things that I don't wear and don't see myself wearing anytime soon. Um, or discovering some hidden treasures that I should wear that, um, maybe, you know, sort of fell out of my favor, but now my style's turning around. Maybe I want to wear it again. So, um, that's like a big job. Probably I'll do a lot of that in January and a lot of planning of what I'm going to make. Like, see, just then this caught on my ring and, and it's really annoying. So this is probably likely to get frogged sometime, which is sad. So anyway, um, that's it for today's episode. Um, as always, I feel a little bit rambly, but um, whatever. <laughs> I don't. I don't really like set out with much of a plan when I when I think I just bring a bunch of stuff out and then that reminds me to talk about them. So um, yeah, I hope that you have had a great week and month and. You've managed to do a lot of knitting. If you're working on the MCAL, um, let me know how you feel about it and your experience with it. Um, and yeah, um, I'll be back another time. So bye-bye. Happy knitting.